All right. Welcome to Building Rapport on Alex Funk YouTube. Here we go. I have a couple bullet points that I'm going to kind of work through. Uh, but I want you to jot down a couple things right away. Number one, when building rapport, remember that it is not about you, it is about them. And so that is number one. Remember that building solid rapport means that that person now likes you and trusts you. And the easiest way to get somebody to like you is to get them to talk about themselves. And so the more that that person thinks that you care about them, which this isn't like you're going in to manipulate this person and, oh, they think I actually care. No, part of it is actually caring. Um, and part of that is just showing that you're listening and asking questions and getting that person to be comfortable with um, unveiling a bunch of information about themselves. So number one, remember, it's about them. It's not about you. Um, the easiest way to get them to talk about themselves is by talking about their life and their background and, and what led them um, to this moment with you. And then, uh, you lead that into cooking rapport and somewhere in there, you mix in your goals, uh, and what you're working towards. So those are a couple things right away. Here is a basic rapport outline, uh, for you. Number one, you want to start with cu the customer rapport and what the customer rapport is, is getting to know the customer, uh, on a deeper level. So some of the things that, I like to say right away, just to kind of set the tone is, hey, I know you want the really long drawn out presentation. I'm, I'm going to keep it short and sweet for you. Okay. So again, that's, hey, I know you want the really long drawn out presentation, but I'm going to keep it short and sweet for you. Let me start off by telling you a little bit about myself. You might be wondering how I ended up in front of you right now showing you kitchen stuff. And then you tell your story. So this is where you plug in your uh, about me stuff, your slideshow, your goal sharing. And this is actually how I love to how I love to open every single presentation is I show up. One of the first things on Zoom, this is a really good icebreaker and it just kind of sets the tone. Hey, I know you want the really long drawn out presentation. I'm going to keep it short and sweet for you. Let me start off by just telling you a little bit about myself. You might be wondering how I ended up in front of you on Zoom right now showing you kitchen stuff. So this is boom. And all of a sudden you start your screen share, you tell your story, go to my video with Jared Erickson on my channel. Um, where he talks about his goal sharing or my goal sharing video, which I'll link those two videos at the end of this. That is where you plug that stuff in. Okay. So at the end, the two videos I put on the screen, that is where you plug this in. So maybe put a star and put goal sharing about me. You then use all of your about you stuff to tie into the customer and relate to them. So every part of your goal sharing is an opportunity to relate to your customer um, maybe that's when you talk about sports and then you talk about, hey, do your kids play any sports? And great rapport isn't about me and then about them. Great rapport is tying everything about you into about them, leading each slide about you into them telling even more things about them. And so it's finding points to relate in yourself with them and making them feel really comfortable with that. At the end of this, you tell your story, you do your goal sharing slides. At the end of that, what you can do to get the customer to, you know, unravel even more information if you don't feel like you have gotten them to open up enough yet through your own goal sharing slides is you can ask the travel, ha travel rapport hack, travel rapport hacking question. And the way that this always sounds is I like to end each goal sharing with a slide about how Cutco has allowed me to travel a bunch. And I always like to ask this question, courtesy of Burt Wicks. I always like to say, hey, by the way, Cutco allows me to travel a ton. Uh, what's your favorite place that you guys have ever traveled? I want to add it. I keep track of this for every customer. I want to add this to my dreams list. What's the best trip you've ever taken? Your customer will then go, mm, probably Banff, Canada because that's the most common answer I've gotten. They won't, they might not say Bay of Canada, but that is the most common answer I've gotten. So but they'll give you, they'll say whatever. And then all you have to do is ask up to three questions about that trip. Okay. 
Hopefully you're taking notes. Get to the travel hacking question. What's your favorite trip you've ever been on? They tell you, you ask another question. When did you go? Uh, who did you go with? Would you go back again? What were a couple things that I should see when I'm there? Right? So when did you go? Who did you go with? Would you go again? Uh, if you went again, what would you do differently? If I went, what things should I see for sure? And if you had any advice for me, if I go visit Banff, what, what would you tell me? And then you ask them, hey, by the way, do you have any pictures? Can I see some pictures? This trip sounds awesome. Customer grabs their phone. They're showing you pictures. Oh my gosh, here's Banff, Canada. And the whole time you are just genuinely interested to hear about this trip that they took. What this is doing is it's developing a relationship and trust between you and your customer that you only gain when you show you care. And you've probably been on a trip before, you've come back and you've wanted to talk about it to everybody, but nobody asked. Maybe you had one person, your grandma, who was like, hey, show me all the pictures from your trip. And you're like, oh my gosh, for sure. Check it out. And then we saw this, and then we saw this, and then we saw this. And that opens up all these emotions of gratitude and excitement and happiness within your customer. And they really, really feel like, hey, this person actually cares. And that feels really good. That's the easiest way to develop rapport. After you go through the travel hacking series, you move into something called cooking rapport. So cooking rapport, jot down, new section. So you want to go, hello, let me tell you a little bit about myself. You probably wonder how I ended up here right now. And then you build rapport with the customer based on your own story. Uh, if you don't feel like you've developed enough rapport, you go into travel hack question, uh, you will have enough ammunition from that. And then you say, hey, before we head into the presentation, I want to do my best to show you things that you might care about. Would you be all right with me asking you a few questions about what you do in the kitchen right now? So before we head into the presentation, I want to do my best to show you things you might actually care about. Would you be all right with me asking you a few questions about what you do in the kitchen right now? Sure. Yeah. And then here's a series of questions. This would this is called cooking rapport. Your manager might have some awesome stuff for you on this as well. Um, but you want to start with, hey. Uh, do you make food because you have to like to or love to? This is in your manual, right? Do you make food because you have to like to or love to? Oh, we love to cook. That's awesome. Hey, who is the main cook in your household? Who does most of the cooking? Oh, you know, it's me. Oh, it's you? Cool, cool. So you do most of the cooking. Would you say that you prepare dinner one to two nights a week, three to five, uh, or pretty much every day? Guess what most people say here? Oh, you know, pretty much every day. Got it. So you're in the kitchen pretty much every night then. Cool. Um, on top of that, what are you doing for breakfast and lunch? This varies. Some people, oh, we're also making breakfast and lunch. Got it. Oh, we prepare lunch the night before in the kitchen. Got it. Uh, we make sandwiches every day. Got it. Cool. Uh, we eat at work. Cool. We make a bagel. Whatever they say here. What I hope you're already recognizing is these are the questions, the cooking rapport, that gives you the ammunition to then sell them Cutco. This is also in my video on my channel, how to make a sale 90% of the time. Um, no clickbait, whatever. It's the like list video, one of my most viewed videos. But this is the cooking rapport that gives you ammunition. And I would recommend, maybe I'll, I'll pin that video on the end of this one as well. So I'll put all three that I'm talking about uh, on the end screen of this video. But what you're doing is asking questions to gain information to then sell them Cutco. And when I say sell them Cutco, really what that means is you're getting the ammunition to find their solution so that they stop suffering in the kitchen. So on top of that, breakfast and lunch, what are you doing? Cool. So for these dinners, what meats are you preparing the most? Would you say chicken, steak, pork chops? Uh, do you guys grill, burgers, brats? And they'll start giving you the ammunition. You need to have a notebook. If you aren't already taking notes on Banff Canada uh, or whatever else they're telling you, like you have to have a notebook out at this point because, again, this is your ammunition. Uh, hey, what about fruits and veggies? What do you do? Do you do a lot of chopping then? Yeah, okay. What are you chopping up the most? Cool. Uh, what other vegetables? You know, anything soft like a tomato, 
or any soft fruits like a peach, lemon, lime, mango, anything like that. Okay. Do you ever sometimes maybe cut up the larger fruits like watermelon, muskmelon, squash sometimes? Okay, cool. Right. Do you guys ever do pineapple? Got it. Okay. Um, and do you ever do like potato or, or should I say sweet potato, squash, rutabaga, anything tough? Yep. Got it. Cool. And then it's, Hey, what's the toughest food you have to cut up in your kitchen? What's the most fun food that you cut up in the kitchen? What's the one that you hate cutting up the most? What's the food that you wish you would eat more of, but it's just such a pain in the hours trying to get that thing cut up. Got it. And at, and after the food series of questions, you move into their knives. So here's the series of knife questions. Okay, ready? And this is the last part of cooking report. You say, hey, okay, last part of this, Mrs. Jones, I'm going to ask you a few questions about what you already have for cutlery, since that's what I'm going to show you the most of. Um, what kind of knives do you have right now? Most people don't know. Okay. Okay, cool. Who sharpens them for you? You're just assuming they need sharpening, right? Oh, you know, this person, that person, or they'll say, nobody, they're super dull. You say, oh, okay. Uh, how often do you sharpen them? How long have you had them? And maybe I'd replay this whole section, make sure you jot these things down. So what kind of knives do you have right now? Cool. Who sharpens them? How often do you sharpen them? How long have you had them? Where did you get them? Do you remember how much you spent on them? And then the last question of this, what is your favorite feature on your current knife set? What's your favorite feature on your current knife set? Well, this is Curtis Jakey who's just assuming they have a set. This is in one of his great Vector Connect talks. What's your favorite feature on your current knife set? And what you're doing is you're already planting the seeds that, hey, if they don't have a set, they should. And what you're going to notice when you ask this question, what's your favorite feature on your current knife set, is they're going to tell you something like the color of the handles. Or they're going to tell you something like, oh, I mean, I like the, how the handles feel. Okay, cool. If And last one, if you had the perfect knife in your hand, what features would it have? Uh, it's super sharp. Don't have to sharpen it. It's comfortable. It looks good. Stays clean. Dishwasher safe. And what you'll notice, whatever they say here, Cutco has it. Like We have every feature they could possibly say in this moment. You say, okay, cool. Hey, no worries. And you're not selling them anything yet. You're just collecting data. You say, hey, last quick question, Mr. Jones. Thanks for doing this, by the way. One last question for you. On a scale of one to 10, how much fun would you say that you have in your kitchen? Three. Got it. Cool. Cool. They hate it because their knives suck. Not for long. Okay, that's it. So you go uh, show up. So, hey, you know, I'm going to make this really long drawn out. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But um, I'll just start with, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, how I ended up here right now. Um, tell your story, relate to them, travel hacking rapport, get to know them a little bit. Not too long, though. Um, and then go into cooking rapport. And this is what really matters. You're collecting information, showing you care. Um, and then after you get done with the cooking rapport, the last part of this, you can make the three promises, which you might've heard of before, which, Hey, I'm going to make you three promises before we get started. Number one, I'm going to be your most expensive friend. Number two, my second promise is I'm going to ask you to buy something at the end of this. And number three is I, one of my last promises, I'm going to ask you for referrals and I hope to be the highlight of your night. However, you want to deliver the three promises. You're just setting expectation. And part of your goals, I hope, is my video on my channel where it's the one line that'll make the biggest difference in your Cutco career. And that one line is, hey, look, by the way, my biggest goal by the end of this is not that you buy $10,000 of Cutco. My biggest goal is that we have some fun today. And by the end of this thing, you know, you, my biggest goal is not that you buy $10,000 of Cutco. You might want to. I think you should. Cutco is awesome. Uh, I believe in this stuff. I think you should have $10,000 of it. But that's that's really not my biggest goal. My biggest goal is that we have some fun today so that by the end of this thing, you're going to want to refer me to a bunch of your friends. Does that sound good? We have some fun. I tell some jokes. You fake laugh at them if you have to. 
No, I'm just kidding. And by the end of this thing, um, you know, I'll ask you for some, some referrals or something like that. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, Hey, let's dive right in. Boom. Screen share, start your presentation. That I think is the perfect beginner's outline of rapport. And you might have a CSP or someone in your division who has other great stuff to add to this or to rework it a little bit. But as far as basic rapport outlines, um, this, this will win you friends, customers, uh, and people who who give you referrals. So remember at the end of the day, tell a lot of jokes, have fun, enjoy the job while you have it. Um, take advantage of the opportunity. And if you ever need anything, feel free to reach out, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. Here's the videos. Subscribe.